Hello, in today's video we're going to talk about flat frames for astrophotography. There are multiple ways of shooting your flat frames and if you don't know, flat frames are basically, I think, the most important one of the bunch of calibration frames if you are editing deep sky astrophotography. Those are the frames that will allow you to basically sort of magically remove any artifacts that you might have in your optical train like vignetting, dust modes, anything like this, even sensor imperfections. So you definitely need to pay attention to flats and there are basically two skulls. And option number one is to use a white t-shirt for diffusion and a flat field generator like an iPad or any kind of a tablet or maybe even a specialized flat field generator, something to put on top of your scope to generate an even illumination across the field and you can take your flats using this way. Or option number two is to take the so-called sky flats, which means that you point your telescope at a patch of sky that has a homogeneous sort of look to it, whether it's a perfectly overcast day or a perfectly clear day with blue sky in twilight, so either just before sunrise or just after sunset, and you can take your flat frames uh, using uh, this kind of a patch of sky. So the question is, which way of taking flats is actually better when it comes to how they calibrate your sub exposures and also which way, which one of those two methods is more convenient depending on the kind of setup that you are running so yeah let's get started Okay, so let's first talk about the convenience aspect, because if you are like me a year ago and you are doing your astrophotography sessions in a way that you take all of your gear, drive to a dark side location, set up, take your images, tear down and head back home, then you basically only are able to do the iPad or flat field generator option because you are not shooting until the dawn and you are not shooting right after sunset. You are basically going when it's still dark, when it's already dark and you're coming back when it's still dark so there is no other way to do that. However, if you have some kind of a permanent setup or a semi-permanent setup like something that I have been running for the past few months, which means that I have my scope on my balcony and I can leave it overnight. I can even leave it there for a couple of days if there is good weather. And a lot of people are doing that in their backyards, on their rooftops, terraces or wherever. You know, you can even have a dedicated shed that you can basically leave your equipment in and you don't have to tear it down every single night. And if you're doing that, then taking sorry then taking your flats using a flat film generator can be a bit of a pain in the ass because every morning you have to go out there you have to play around with the flat field you need to slew to zenith you need to put it on top you need to take your flats and then you need to head back home and ideally you would do that after every single imaging night because from night to night the conditions in your optical train might change maybe there's some dust that accumulates on the front element uh, of your telescope or something like this which influences your optical train so ideally you are going to you should be taking flats every single night and if you have this kind of a setup it's more convenient to take sky flats because basically when the night is over and it's done you can just point your telescope into a clear patch of sky take your flats even without leaving your home if you have an automated setup like with Nina or a similar program and that's basically it you don't need to hustle and fiddle around with any flat panels so that's what I want to test because ideally I want to be taking uh, those sky flats and I want to see if sky flats are able to calibrate my images just as good as flats using a flat field generator or in my case an iPad. So I'm going to show you some images right now and let's see if you can spot any, any differences and if you can see which ones are better uh, in your opinion. So let's dive in. Actually, one more thing I should mention that to take all of these sets of flats, both the sky flats and the flats using an iPad, I have been using Nina's Flat Wizard to do that, which basically is an automated process that figures out the optimal exposure times per filter to uh, have a histogram peak for your flats at the, at the place where you want them. So it would be typically between one third of the way to one half of the way of the histogram. And this is what I have been, uh, I have been using for both the sets of flats and I have used the same exact parameters in the flat wizard in Nina so we are really comparing apples to apples here so now let's say, let's take a look at some images okay so right here I wanted to show you the master flats and this is the HA filter and an HA on my camera which is the ASI 294 mm pro there is this kind of a 
very distinctive pattern of darkness here. This, this, these images we're going to be taking a look in Photoshop because this is the easiest way to kind of um, compare to images. They have been auto stretched in PixInsight and nothing else has, has been done to these images. So this is auto stretched from PixInsight across everything that I will be showing you here. And this one is the Sky Flat Master and then this one is the iPad. Uh, so the flat field generator, iPad Master Flat. And as you can see, if I uh, toggle this eyeball here, you can see that there, there is a difference indeed. The sky flat looks a bit different from the, um, from the master flat uh, generated with an iPad. So let's see how it actually compares on those sub exposures. So first let's take a look at the HA. And here is a single sub exposure of the monkey head nebula right here in the middle. And this is a raw uncalibrated sub. As you can see, we have this pattern of, of, of darkness that we saw on our uh, master flats. And also we have some amp glow here. And uh, yeah, so this is the uncalibrated sub. And now we have the sub that has been calibrated using sky flats. And as you can see, it looks pretty good at first glance. There is no amp glow here. Of course, the amp glow got away because I used also darks. And we have no darkness here. This looks uh, perfectly even. And now let's take a look at how it looks if I calibrated it using uh, flats uh, generated with an iPad. And as you can see, there is a little bit of difference. If I toggle this eyeball, take a look at what happens to this image. I'm I, I'm hoping that you can see that on YouTube. The image that we get by calibrating it with sky flats has a tiny bit of a gradient. It is a little bit brighter at the top and darker at the bottom. Whereas with an iPad, it's more even. Again, iPad, sky, iPad, sky. As you can see with sky, there is this tiny bit of gradient. So I figured, okay, if we have a tiny bit of gradient, maybe I can easily remove it with automatic background extraction in PixInsight. So um, I have run automatic background extraction for both images, both the one cal uh, calibrated with iPad and the one calibrated with Skyflats. So this one is going to be, the next one is going to be calibrated with iPad and also run ABE. So there is a little bit of a difference. The image got a little bit brighter and maybe even a little bit more even across the board. So again, before ABE, after ABE with the same calibration uh, flats with, with an iPad. And then we have the same thing with uh, sky flats. So as you can see with sky flats, we don't see this gradient anymore from top to bottom, but the image is a little bit brighter. And in order to really compare apples to apples here, I have run the linear fit on this calibrated frame with sky flats. I have fitted it to the one calibrated with the iPad flats. And linear fit is basically a way to kind of equalize the histogram so there are the, the same levels of brightness across the board. Uh, so, so because the, the entire image is a little bit brighter, if I run linear fit, it will equalize to the same sort of overall brightness level. So after linear fit, this is what we get, which is a little bit darker from without it, the same kind of sky flats ABE. And now let's compare, let's um, toggle this off and let's compare the iPad flats ABE and then sky flats ABE with linear fit to the iPad flats ABE. Sorry, I, I know it's a bit of a <laughs> hard to say and I hope it makes sense what I'm trying to say to you. Let's take a look at this before and after. Again, I'm toggling this eyeball. So right here we see sky flats, iPad flats, sky flats, iPad flats. And as you can see, the difference is pretty much non-existent. I would say that they look 99.9% .9 almost the same. On YouTube, you probably don't see any difference. I see a little bit of a difference here in this corner again. Before, this is iPad and this is Sky Flats, but pretty much they look almost identical. And honestly, I think the one with Sky Flats and Linear Fitted uh, look a tiny bit maybe better if I had to decide, but pretty much this is, this is pretty much the same thing. So as you can see, the, we really get a comparable uh, result, whether we use sky flats or whether we use uh, iPad flats. Uh, okay, but <laughs> this was in HA, so let's take a look quickly at O3 and S2. So again, same process. We start with an uncalibrated image. This is O3, so we have uh, no no darkness here on the left side, and we have the amp glow here, and then we have calibrated with sky flats, then we have calibrated with iPad flats, the gradient, and we have the same kind of a tiny bit of gradient from top to bottom. With iPad flats, there is less of it, but maybe it's a little bit brighter on this side. 
which which could be a natural gradient of the sky. The, in the O3, we get the most light pollution across all of our narrowband filters. So maybe this gradient that we see from left to right actually comes from the gradient in, uh, in the light pollution of the sky. And then I have run ABE on this one. So as you can see, it's more even, a little bit brighter on the right side. Then we have the sky flats after ABE. A little bit darker, uh, but also pretty, pretty flat and pretty, um, you know, gradient free. And then I have done the same trick with linear fit. So let's enable that. It gets a little bit brighter. So let's toggle this off. And now let's compare iPad, iPad flats after ABE to sky flats after ABE and linear fitted. So again, before, uh, sort of iPad, sky flats, iPad, sky flats. And in on three, I don't see any difference at all. I can pixel peep and they're, they're identical, 100% identical. So in O3, I don't see any difference, any sort of advantage of using a flat field generator over sky flats. And like I said, in my setup, doing sky flats is way more convenient because I can just, you know, wake up when it's, uh, you know, pre-dawn, like half an hour before sunrise, click a button in Nina, wirelessly connecting to my imaging PC via my phone click a button and then just basically wait for a couple of minutes to complete, park my mount and then go back to sleep again. So let's check, uh, in order to uh, confirm this hypothesis, let's also check S2 so we can see if they're good enough as well with sky flats. And again, same thing, we have the um, uncalibrated image, we see the amp glow and we see a little bit of a vignette here, this darkness that looks a little bit like with HA, a little bit different, but kind of similar. So again, calibrated with sky flats, uh, calibrated with iPad flats, a tiny bit of difference. Maybe we have this top to bottom gradient with the sky flats again. So now we have iPad flats with ABE, we have sky flats with ABE and then linear fitted. So let's toggle this off and let's compare sky flats after ABE and after linear fit to iPad flats after ABE. So again, iPad, sky flats, iPad, sky flats, and again, I don't see any difference. So in S2 and in O3, there is no difference whatsoever that I can notice on a single sub in HA. Maybe there's a tiny bit of a difference there, but again, they are pretty much also comparable. I couldn't really decide which one is better than the other. And if you're worried that those differences or those tiny bit of gradients that we had to remove with ABE would build up as we integrate our image, don't worry because I have successfully used uh, sky flats to like, um, I don't know, six, eight ish, maybe even hours long integrations on my previous projects, which you can check out by checking out this video about my review of the set of uh, narrowband filters that I'm using the three nanometer from Optolong and you can see my final stacks and my final images that have been calibrated using sky flats successfully without any issues. So to conclude, I would say that uh, whether you are using a flat field generator or sky flats, you can get the same results. If one is more convenient than the other for you, go for that solution. If you have a permanent setup or a semi-permanent setup using Nina or a similar routine, I would say that it is way easier to do it this way. And uh, just to be clear, I didn't use any kind of a white t-shirt or anything to diffuse. I just pointed my scope and just took those flats and let Nina decide the, op the optimal exposure time and it turned out just fine. So with a semi-permanent setup again or a permanent setup, definitely highly recommended to take sky flats. And yeah, that's basically it. If you want to learn about how to use the flat wizard in Nina, there are already a bunch of videos from other creators that I can highly recommend. And I, I myself learned from these guys. So links below, there are definitely two videos that you should check out if you are new to that. And subscribe to my channel as well. There will be a lot more videos uh, on similar subjects. And I already have a ton of videos about astrophotography on my channel. So check that out as well if this is your first video from me. And I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Hope you, hope you get some clear skies and yeah, happy imaging. Bye-bye.